Great, thanks, Samantha, and thank you everybody for joining uh, this morning's webinar. Our topic today is Veeam, um, your secret weapon for defeating ransomware. Uh, my name is Adam Gassensmith. I'm the manager of client engagement. I'm going to introduce Blake in just a moment, but those of you who are frequent guests on our webinars uh, will be excited to learn that you'll be hearing from somebody who isn't myself or Bruce Ward today. So um, we look forward to uh, what, what Blake has to share with us. Um, from an agenda perspective, we're going to uh, quickly get into the content here, but I'm going to go over some logistics real quickly and uh, give an introduction of Blake. Blake's going to talk about some ransomware tips and how Veeam protects against ransomware. And then we're going to talk a little bit about assessing the state of your backup and recovery. Um, one of the things that you may have noticed in the invitations, we do have some incentives for folks joining, and we appreciate um, everybody that made the time to join this morning. Um, but everybody who attends today will receive a Grubhub gift card for $20. Uh, following the webinar, um, we're going to go ahead and email those out to you. So keep an eye for uh, out for it in your inbox. Um, we'll use the email address that you use to register um, for today's webinar. And then the other um, piece to talk about from an incentive perspective, uh, we're going to be doing a drawing uh, right at the end of today's webinar um, for a Surface Go 2 um, for any attendees that are present. So Samantha will, will take care of that um, towards the end of today's session. Um, a couple other items logistically, Samantha mentioned that you can um, ask your questions at any time using the Q&A panel or using the chat panel. Um, I will keep an eye on that and um, kind of queue questions up. Um, Blake's going to give his presentation, and then at the end of his presentation, we're going to make time to kind of read through some of those questions, get some answers to those um, before we move into the last portion of our presentation. So there will be time um, for that, and, and we'll uh, know that your questions are going to be addressed as you ask them. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Blake. So uh, Blake, you can see on your screen there, um, you may have seen him present at our events before, Blake von Brockdorf. Uh, his, his role is Senior Technical Partner Manager with Veeam. Um, we at Peters & Associates have been working with him for a couple of years. Like I said, he's spoken at our events before. Um, tremendous resource. He spent a decade um, prior to working at Veeam, actually kind of on our side of the table as a solution architect with partners, um, working in Azure, working in Office 365, um, and working in infrastructure. Uh, and now with Veeam, he specializes in data protection and really a great resource for us uh, as well as our customers. So I um, really appreciate the opportunity uh, and the time that Blake is giving us to, uh, to us today. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Blake um, uh, to go ahead and share out his screen and, and give us some tips on how Veeam is protecting uh, us against ransomware. All right. All right, Adam, thank you so much for that great introduction. <laughs> I really appreciate that. I, 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 that was great. Um, hopefully you can see my screen. We're good to go? We can, yes. Excellent. All right, so let's talk about Veeam and ransomware. Um, after that great introduction, I just got to jump right into it. So um, at this point, I find this slide kind of funny a little bit at this point in that asking who has seen ransomware. I would be surprised if you haven't. Um, but what shocks a lot of people is to realize that ransomware is not new. It's not new in any way, shape, or form. It's been around since at least the 80s uh, and, and so on, and is now a multi-billion dollar industry globally as far as what they're doing. Obviously an illegal industry, but that is just what it represents and, and how significant this threat has become. So. When we think about data protection, you know, it's really important to look at things and realize backup needs to be more than backup. And Veeam has taken this approach of being more about data, being a data management platform. So you can see that at the top of the screen, we are still about backup and recovery. Of course, it's the core of what we do. But it's also about having mobility across various uh, different platforms, such as uh, mobility from VMware into Azure, or uh, maybe back into Hyper-V or physical. 
but you, being able to to have that flexibility to move um, to different platforms, being able to monitor all of that. I'm going to talk about why that's really important in a minute, and not just because you want to know whether you know your CPU is getting pegged or anything like that, but also from that DR perspective, the true importance of orchestration and automation, regardless of the size of your business. Okay, and then of course. Governance and compliance, this is where we put security into it. Veeam has been uh, at the forefront of every all of our development that we've done, especially in the past few years, making sure that we're, we're hitting and, and, and all of the different um, laws that have come out, such as the California Privacy Act, um, with the Sarbanes-Oxley stuff, GDPR, all of those different things that you, we all have to deal with. We wanna make sure that as a, a, a data management platform, that we are really addressing all of the needs that you could potentially face when you're looking at taking care of, of your data center. And we also like bringing to this a, a single platform being, for being able to make this happen. We do have five core products that make up the Veeam offering, but almost nearly all roads of these products lead to the Veeam availability suite. Because again, Veeam wants to be about scalability, flexibility, and mobility. And, and, and doing this allows us to create um, a, a, a type of uh, layered defense, so to speak, when it comes to how we want to approach data management and, and why we want to have a layered defense, because it, 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 that is what's required to be able to combat against ransomware. There's many different areas uh, all through those different five that ransomware could attack that I, that I showed you initially of what we do in our, our data management platform. And so it's important to understand there is no uh, magic bullet when it comes when it comes to ransomware or, or any type of cyber attack or anything like that. But there's a lot of things that we can do to help mitigate that risk um, and do it from a simplistic manner um, and, and so that we don't have to bring a, a lot of additional overhead and administration to, to, your, um, to your business. Biggest thing to remember on this, we, we beat this into the ground. It turned into an industry standard. Veeam actually set the stage for this as an industry. The three, two, one rule, three copies of your data, two different media types, one of them off-site, preferably offline if possible. And we've added a zero, another one in there, zero errors after your backup verification, okay? Make sure you can actually recover from it. You know, one of the things that helped Veeam set itself apart um, from, from all of our competitors is that Many products can back up data. The question is, how easy is it to bring it back? And how many different options do you have to get there? But enough about that. Let's jump into the different things that Veeam is doing and recommends to you. And a couple of these you can do yourself. Um, but let, let's jump into things that Veeam does to be able to create this multi-layered defense. The first one and the most important, guys, that I, and I say the most important to begin with, because this is the foundation of where it all starts. And that is using special credentials for the backup job. And what I'm talking about here is, you know, it, like Adam mentioned, I, I used to work at Partners do, as an architect, which meant I not only did pre-sales, but did implementations for a lot of different companies. And it's amazing to me how many times I would go in and, and to implement for a company and they would literally hand me the domain backslash administrator credentials as, as, as a way to get in. That's horrible. <laughs> Worst practice all the way around. That should be nobody. If you know the password in your head to your domain backslash administrator account, change it. Put it in a safe. Don't get to it. Yeah, um, better practice for what you're going to do is if, you, if you're connected to a domain, definitely have service accounts. Have as many service accounts as you need. Please don't recycle and reuse when it comes to that. But the best practice and is this is don't even connect your backup environment to the domain. Veeam does not require you to have the backup server or components connected to the domain. Now, this is something that hasn't always been that way. Some of you may have it that way, even your Veeam environment. But I can tell you that at this point, through the advancements that we've done within Veeam and, and as we have created this layered uh, defense, one of the biggest things we just look at and say at this point, you have no reason for any part of your of your backup environment, especially your repository, to be connected to the domain. Remember, ransomware is all about compromising the highest credential it can get a hold of. If it gets a hold of a domain admin account, it's going right through. And and but if you have a local host account, it's not going anywhere because 
first it's got to get to it, but then it would have to change. It's not smart enough yet. At the same time, when you issue those accounts to, for people to access those servers, that's the point. You're having a person access it, not a server. So you, you don't follow the practice of creating like um, sysadmin or veeam admin or, or, or something of that nature as a generic um, uh, login for people to access these servers. Make sure that each backup administrator has their own individual access. You want to be able to track who is doing what. Okay. And you know what? Those of us who are in IT should be used to at this point monitoring our own credentials and, and being used to having at least two, if not three, different credentials depending on what we would do. One for everyday use, one for administrator stuff, and potentially a different one if we are also happen to be a backup administrator. Okay. The incidents already right here on the slide for you. Compromised account, uh, you know, uh, uh, malicious backup admin, so on. Why we're doing that's going to come up a little more later as far as visibility. Next thing though, I mentioned in that 321, not only off-site, but potentially offline storage. This one is one that I think most people at this point understand when it comes to uh, ransomware. I mean, you can't override it if you can't get to it, right? Um, so at this point, why offline? Well, then it's not a connected share. We're thinking air gap, that type of scenario. So when we're thinking about things like air gap, disconnected, what could we do besides tape? I have tape up there as number one because it's still valid. Um, it exists, it's real, um, uh, much to the cringe of some people, but there's other opportunities here of ways that things that ransomware cannot do. One is looking at replication. If you're, if you're doing replicated VMs and so on, um, those are running in a completely different authentication framework, especially from a, a vSphere point of view, or potentially even if, if you're doing storage snapshots. Okay, Storage snapshots are operating within their own authentication framework that's completely separate from um, what, what credentials could be that ransomware would have compromised. Um, Rotating hard drives, of course, are still an option for being offline. That's kind of like the tape option. But the two that really stand out here, okay, number one would be looking at Cloud Connect backups. This is something if you were utilizing uh, someone like, like Peters to be able to take and, and be your private cloud, they're absorbing your off your your offsite data, and and as such, they offer in, what we call insider protection with that data, meaning that even if a malicious admin were to delete all of your data, they have it in a recycle bin that um, you can't access straight up. You, you, there's nothing you can do to get to it. At the same time, we use, a, we use a completely different structure once that communication is made to Cloud Connect that is, it is not a SIF, it's, it's, it's not an SMB, it's not NFS. Making that jump to that other type of file system or, or uh, authentication method, it will not be possible, even in the case of compromised Cloud Connect credentials, okay? If you choose not to go that direction, we do offer the public cloud as well for, for your offsite, such as object storage. Think of immutability. Veeam offers immutability, meaning that if it goes into a bucket that's, that's made immutable for a set period of time, absolutely nothing can happen to that data. You can't delete it, overwrite, edit, all the different synonyms you wanna come up with. Um, at the same time, um, it's still available for you to restore from. This is really helpful because even when you're thinking public cloud, just like private cloud or Cloud Connect backups, the malicious admin can't walk in to the data center and walk out with the hard drives if they wanted to. Good luck breaking into one of those data centers. <laughs> they're, they're locked down probably better than some maximum security prisons. <laughs> so you're just not getting in. But on top of this, and I was, I've been hinting at this. This is why we go back to this three, two, one. Leverage different file system protocols for backup storage. And let me show you how easy this is, okay? The duplication appliances, such as data domain, star once, and exagrid, all operate on their own independent proprietary authentication protocol, okay? So now already you have it land on one, on one potentially spinning disk, then it moves to a deduplication appliance already. We're changing file, we're fi changing file systems, different protocols, they're very secure in how they do it. At the same time, we have an opportunity that as, as a different file system, you could utilize even a Linux server that could be just a JBot if you wanted, okay? RAFS on, on Windows side, XFS on the Linux side, again, two different file systems. 
at this point in time, as I always say with ransomware yet, it does not jump file systems. Okay, so when, when you're thinking about different ways that you're creating these different layers, why we talk about having multiple copies of your data to recover from, and, and so on, these are part of, of those different layers that we're looking to put it together. Further, understanding how we help you utilize from a cost-effective point of view, if you don't know, Veeam has for some time have had what we call a scale-out backup repository. What this is, is our ability at the first tier level for you to be able to put together disparate extents if you wanted to. That could be, as you see on the left-hand side, there could be direct attached storage, network attached, or even combined with a, a dedupe appliance. Or we, or we bring that all together um, from a performance tier point of view, and, and you can use the, the aggregate of all of the um, space that you have available from all of those different pieces. Veeam manages those, those storage uh, repositories for you. Um, and, and that's one way to, to put it all together and then effectively manage what you may have even laying around your, your, your um, data center. But at the same time, what we did is we added that additional tier that now with the simple click, check of a box, we can now immediately copy and or move those, those uh, backups into what we call the capacity tier. And that's moving it into that object storage, okay? It's a policy base. So now what we're doing is we're able to take out of your primary backup job, and our we now our primary backup jobs now have the ability to have GFS built into them. So there's a copy of your data being dropped on the performance tier. We've checked the box to just immediately copy into object storage. Now between this, we've just done two, two, one. So only think about three, but we've now got two copies of your data, two different media types, one of them being off site, potentially immutable. Okay. So when we talk about all these different levels of how we can get there, I want you to understand that while there's a lot of pieces we're talking about that sound complex, this is the technology that Veeam is building in, has built into uh, their product to make sure that we still keep it simple, that we can perform these complex uh, you know, um, uh, operations without having to bring complexity to your environment. And as a way of going even further, and a hint for all of you who love teasers for what's coming new and next, is coming with version 11, which should be hopefully by Q1 of this next year, is we're gonna also be offering the ability to have immutable storage on the local Linux repositories. Um, this is a, an exciting thing for us and what we're able to do so that if you wanted to utilize mutability locally, not just with object storage and so on, uh, you'd be able to do so. And literally we're talking about like a most recent copy of Ubuntu 20.04 or something of that nature. And again, um, not a, if you're not a Linux person, don't worry, it's not complex. Beam takes care of all the work. So again, using what you have that's around, being cost effective and trying to keep it simple while bringing you options is what we're all about. Now that you have all this data in this, in, in this potential three, two, one scenario, how do we make sure when we're bringing it back that it, it, it's, it's solid? Well, this is where we bring in Veeam's data labs and secure restore uh, features. And this is all based on something that you should also be using. It gives you the zero in three, two, one, zero. And that is, as soon as it clicks, our sure backup feature that's been around since BBR version five, which came out 10 years ago, okay? If you don't know what Sure Backup, especially if you have Veeam today, if it's been there, it's been kind of hiding in the back. Unfortunately, it's underutilized. Um, believe me, Peters would be glad to help you get that set up and configured and so on, because what this does is bring automated recover or verification of your backups so that they can be used for recovery. Okay. We do this in what we call a data lab, an isolated data lab environment, which basically is like a sandbox. Okay, from this, you're gonna be able to receive test results based on, and status based on whether we run ping, heartbeat, you can do custom scripts like a SQL query, uh, various different things that you can automate all of this. That happen on a, a middle of a Sunday night while you're sleeping peacefully at home and, and, and you come in the next morning to get, get those test results. But here's the big thing about it. Regardless of the size of your environment, no additional equipment is required. This is the core of what Sure Backup does. It can be scaled to crazy levels. People use it for R&D, all kinds of additional sandboxes, things like that. And yes, you can assign equipment to it, but at its core, we want it to make it to where even somebody who's just running a single virtual host, maybe you're just running Hyper-V on a, on a single host, that you can still verify 
your backups and, 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 and uh, make sure that you can recover from them. I'm telling you about this because we took, and we, not only is that important for the 3210 rule, but then we want to take and look at it and say, moving forward, what other features do we have? Well, if one of them that we released this last year was Secure Restore, and this is specific to Veeam. We have patented this. We, we, we are the first ones to come out with this, just like we were the first ones to come out with Instant VM Recovery again in, in 2010 and so on, pioneering in, in, in this space what Secure Restore is doing for you. I'm just gonna run you through the process and I think it'll, it'll describe itself. You're gonna select a restore point. You've been hit, okay? This is reactive. You've been hit, ransomware has gotten there. You need to come back and you need to come back quickly. All right, you wanna select your most recent restore point, obviously, right? Because you don't want, you don't wanna lose uh, or you want to lose as little data as you possibly can. So what's going to happen in this process, you're going to select your restore point like you normally would, and we're going to mount it up and get it ready to go. But now what we're going to do is we're going to initiate, once we mount it up and kind of open it up, say say like a blooming onion, okay, we're going to open up that backup file, okay, and we're doing it in a secure manner um, in that all we're doing is opening up the backup file so that we can look into it. So nothing's coming into, into your environment, still in a sandbox, so to speak. And we're gonna initiate an AV scan, a completely passive AV scan that is safe for all server types, including SQL servers, because we are not installing AV, we are not interrupting processes, we're not doing anything with it because it is a static backup file, not something we're spinning up. You could actually set up a virtual nuclear bomb inside of it, and then when it closes back up, it'll be like it never happened. So it's safe to run this. So we do that, we run the AV check, no infections found, we'll continue the restore. If we do find infections, we got two choices. One, we can proceed with the restore, but the network's gonna be disabled. So if you need to get in, it's gonna be console access, something of that nature, or we can just stop. And, and the best part is, is we can then give you a detailed analysis of where we found all, all of those uh, different infections, what's going on. Now, time, okay? This is tied into our instant VM recovery technology and how we're pulling this off, okay? We're talking about getting through, being able to verify restore points in a matter of minutes. When I do this in my lab, my personal lab, um, I, I promise you I don't have lightning fast storage on the back end at all. Um, I, ha I have a four terabyte file server uh, that's got a bunch of stuff on it, lots of files, all kinds of things. Uh, that's great test for that. I get through scanning that in about 30 minutes. You know, So when you start thinking about being able to bust through restore points in minutes, not days, and you're not just throwing a dart at the dartboard, um, this starts becoming something that's awesome for you. Now, Veeam itself is not in the AV business, and we like you to, again, have choices, flexibility. So out of the box, we do integrate with Windows Defender, ESET, Symantec, and the other one you don't see on here is Kaspersky. But any, any antivirus software that has command line support is, 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 is supported. We have a KB article, that an XML file that's adjusted. It's super easy to do. So if you like your Trend Micro or, or, or Sophos or some of the others of the world, you can use any of them. We do not have a recommendation on any particular one that you would want to use. It's up to you and the definitions that you trust on what you're, what you're doing with. Now, what's great about this is that, yes, we're spinning this up and we could potentially restore this into VMware Hyper-V, but it's important to know that Secure Restore works with anything that is a, that turns into a VBK. A VBK is our proprietary uh, file extension for our backup format. So this includes um, files that you want to restore back into Azure, AWS, and individual virtual disks instead of a whole VM. If you've backed up physical servers with our with our agents or in, any or, or or as a virtual disk, we can take care of that. And, and during an instant restore process or a full VM restore, it's all there. Now swinging that back, and I didn't have a slide for this particular one, but swinging this all back, that was all reactive from a proactive point of view. That sure backup scan can be made part of your sure backup job, or secure restore should be made part of your sure backup. Which means while you're validating if your backup files are good to be restored from, you can also validate that they're clean and potentially catch something in flight. So come Monday morning, you may have found, well, you're running it every week. Now you can start pinpointing it down where you got infected and what's going on and, and catch it potentially in flight. Not just ransomware, that's because it's AV, it could be anything. Especially against servers that don't normally run AV. That's something that's really important there too, okay? 
Now, as you're going through and putting all these pieces together, one of the things that's really important is making sure that you document all of these different plans that you put together um, and, and, and what's going on. And you've got some kind of a paper trail. And I'm sure that's everybody's favorite topic to, to go through, you know, is, is let's let's make documentation. <laughs> so exciting. Hey, raise your hand if you love making visios. There's always at least one in the environment, what, 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 one in the room, um, but not the vast majority. So we looked at this and said, you know, when you're, when you're looking at documenting your recovery plan, obviously it's great. You can have something that's got your, your, what, what your plan is. If you actually build one, um, you can, because you can create your failover plans, your disaster recovery plans and so on uh, in, in being backup and, and, and replication. But we want to take this a step further and say, for those of you who don't like making it, what if they could be generated dynamically? You do the part you like to do in IT and create the plan, create the plans by building it. You know, actually moving your servers around and deciding what, whether they're tier one, tier two, tier three, what order they need to boot up in, all of that and so on. But now it's, it's boring to test them and to create all that documentation, you want to do other things. Well, in steps VM Availability Orchestrator, which I mentioned before, uh, as part of that suite of, of what brings things together. Availability Orchestrator runs on top of VBR. VBR is the engine that, that goes with it. Availability Orchestrator comes in here and says, I want to create documentation that is ISO compliant um, in, in a way that, that will update as you take and adjust things, as you move stuff around in your data center. Um, we want to automate the testing of all of that, potentially using like the, the data labs, ensure backup or, or ensure replica, verify your, rep, your replicas, um, and have a reliable recovery. Know you can bring it back on a regular basis. Having an entire full DR plan um, be able to be tested on a regular basis without having to take down your production environment. So we're talking about compliant documentation, um, being able to orchestrate disaster recovery, uh, uh, potentially even planned migrations, okay? What are your SLAs? What, what, what's your RTO and your RPOs? You know, really thinking about these things from a business continuity disaster recovery type of, of, of scenario rather than just what is backup. So this allows you to think also uh, about patch testing, application upgrades, security and audit trails, a lot of stuff that happens in there. So this sounds a little more complicated for some people and that, and that sounds pretty big, maybe even expensive in so long. Because, you know, we're just going to do this for replicated environments, right? I mean, and then you think, well, yeah, Blake, that's great, but I'm not one of those environments. I don't have a colo sitting over here. I'm not replicating. I've got all these backup files, and I'm at least keeping the 3 two, one rule. I'm with you. I got it. So this is the cool thing about the way Orchestrator works is that it's not just about those VMDKs that you're replicating. You don't have to be replicating. We can do all of this with your Veeam backup files, too. If it is a VBK, we can make this happen. At the same time, okay, I feel like I'm giving you an infomercial now, but wait, there's more, okay? And that is, we have priced it at this point to accommodate all environments. Why do I put it that way? Not just because I, I want you to buy the product. We all want you to buy. I mean, why else we got you here, right? But to understand that in the smallest of environments, I guarantee you don't probably have all of the IT staff that you would like to have. <laughs> um, and, and, and why, why you potentially contract with others to, to, to provide some of that additional help. If you had a way to automate a lot of these processes and make all that work, whether it, whether it's testing and putting it all together, or if something happened, you know you'd be sweating bullets getting everything up in a period of time, this is priced for you and, and it's ready to take care of it. At the same time, go to the complete other end of the spectrum for those you know medium and enterprise level environments. Now you have so much in that environment that you wouldn't want it to be manual. And you would need, and it would be take forever to build all that documentation. So it's important to understand something like Orchestrator is meant for everybody, and we've priced it that way to make sure that it's not expensive, to make sure that you can um, uh, have the protection and, and orchestration you really need. And now while you've got all of that in place, make sure you have visibility into what's going on. What am I talking about, okay, about that suspicious behavior? Make sure your monitoring software has the ability to go above and beyond just, hey, I'm running out of space. Hey, this CPU is spiking. What's really going, you know, or you're overloading your resources. What about actual suspicious behavior? And I'm talking about having potentially like predefined alarms that there's possible ransomware activity happening in your environment. 
Veeam One is is our monitoring uh, and analytical tool that's part of the Veeam availability suite, and we have built into that. Here's a screenshot of it. That if it's kicking off, we're going to be able to see that ransomware activity that's going on potentially, because we're going to be monitoring different behavioral patterns that are going on in your data stores, across your networks, across your CPU usages, and things like that. That we're looking for things that are out of whack, and and to get your attention to them. So yes. We are looking about how we can maximize and take care of your environment, make sure it doesn't go down in other ways, but we're also looking for things that could potentially threaten it and not in just a, a, a way of, of your growing out of it, but potentially an external threat coming in. So like I mentioned, this is a 24 seven real time monitoring and alerting tool, 340 preset alarms, 145 reports. You can make, a, you can make more of, of each. Um, know you're protected and taken care of again. And if you don't like making Visios, <laughs> Once you put together all of your uh, your groups here and all this, build your groups, define them, have your VMware tags, all that in place, if, if, and so on, or use Business View within VM uh, with Veeam One, and we'll pump out Visios of those groups that you that you've made for you. We will do, we will generate those for you. So again, we're trying to take that 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 stress off of you. So we have again those customizable reports and Visios that you can get out of Veeam One to see what's going on. And I would be remiss. I didn't mention Office 365 real quick, because if you're not in Office 365, well, I'm sure you will be soon. <laughs> but, but the big thing about Office 365 is to understand is that while Microsoft is offering you that infrastructure, it can still, your data is still susceptible to ransomware. Um, and, and this is a link that, that shows it, an example of it in real time, but it is real. We have seen it, uh, but it's important to understand that the way Microsoft looks at this, um, it's your data, you own it, you control it. It genuinely comes down to it's your responsibility to take care of your data. And, 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 and we mentioned that here that, that, that we're talking about Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams. I, I have a huge thing I do on Office 365. I can tell you exponential growth in Teams is not the right word. I need to do exponential to the exponential power. And, and, and we will talk about how much Office 365 has grown in, in the last uh, 10 months, six to eight months, 10 months. And, and I'm sure we all know why. Um, but it's important to realize that as this data is becoming, especially unstructured data, becoming more uh, kind of decentralized from the way you used to do it before, but centralized in a different matter, it's important to understand that's your data. It's not Microsoft's. It's not their responsibility to maintain it. It's their responsibility to give you the infrastructure your responsibility to protect it. So that's why we have Veeam Backup for Office 365, okay? Finally, as we're, as we're getting uh, wrapping up to the end here, it's really important to stay up to date. I know we get all the, all the letters in the world, our, our newsletters and the spam. I mean, I get plenty of it too, it's there. Know how to cut through it. Two ways we recommend, obviously, you know, from the Veeam perspective, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty excited about pushing our part. Follow our Twitter if you'd like, at BeamKB. But the big one I would tell everybody, forums.beam.com. Um, Anton Gostev is, is our senior VP of product development. And he, every week, sends out a digest with a blurb of what's going on in the world, whether it's an Intel CPU being exploited or any of the things that are going on um, that he really sees as a risk from a data protection uh, scenario, as well as, of course, talking about some Beam stuff, but really bringing some real world perspective to what's going on. And all of us are required to be involved in, in those forums. And if you want to influence where we're going, what we're doing, and, and so on, 60% of our roadmap is generated from feedback that we get from our partners and customers at those forums. And everyone is welcome to sign up and participate there. So please, forums.beam.com. If they ever had an I wish, that's where you put it. Um, and before I'm done, before I'm done, I just have to say it one more time, guys, because uh, I can't say it enough. That is three copies of your data, two different media types, one of them offsite, no errors. The last thing you want to do when you're going to recover, especially for something crazy, is have an error stopping you. Okay. So with that, I'm going to throw it back over to Adam, and I hope you guys are throwing some questions at us, and we'll get there, but uh, we'll see what we got. Adam. Great. Thank you, Blake. Uh, terrific presentation, as always. Really appreciate it. I'm going to show my screen here. Um, we did have a couple of questions come up in the queue, so while we are transitioning, um, why don't we go ahead and address uh, those? So um, one question that came in, Blake, um, someone looking at backup and replication solution wanted to know um, 
are there any plans to support Google um, Cloud Platform? We are releasing our support of Google Cloud Platform with version 11. So that with that, we'll have be able to de uh, integrate directly into their object storage and be able to do some other protections. The infrastructure as a service part of it is going to be a little more limited, but in, in, in the very least, we're excited to be able to um, actually announce that support. Uh, Google has finally gotten the APIs updated and all that for us, and, and, and we've been able to offer that integration. So we're excited to see where that goes. Okay, that's great to hear. So uh, hopefully Q1 of 2021 is, is what I'm yes. hearing. That. Um, not not if, firm. I, I have to say in Veeam fashion, that's not firm yet. Okay, <laughs> but if we follow where where we're going, where I know the betas are, all of that, and what we try to do, tied in with our kickoff and things like that, it's usually January or February. So I, I would say that that's at least probably what we're targeting and going for. We we won't hold you to that, Blake. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then one other question came in, and I, I I don't know if I fully understand it here. I'm not sure if this is in reference to Veeam one or the um, Secure Restore, but uh, is it possible to define accurate thresholds for ransomware alerts? Um, and I know it, it looks like they're clarifying that it is in Veeam 1 that they're asking about that. So thresholds for ransomware alerts in, in Veeam 1. So every alarm that exists, including the one uh, for ransomware, anything that we that exists in there are all customizable in all of those ways. In fact, one of the things that I recommend to all people the first time you install Veeam 1 is, is the getting started wizard pops up right away and says, what's an SMTP server we can do to send you our alerts? Yes, yeah, skip that. <laughs> okay, skip that right off the bat because the first run of that will load test Office 365, let it you know generate its noise, see what's going on because you may find that, that some of those thresholds depending on your environment may need to be adjusted. There may be a reason for some hype CPU usage and things of that nature. And yes, everything is fully customizable even down to that same alarm for different VMs and things of that nature. So uh, lots of options in Veeam 1 for that. Great. Um, let's see, and one more question that just came in. Um, Blake, it feels like it's just teed up right for you. Uh, I currently have Veeam 9.5. Are there more features in the newer versions? So uh, Veeam 10, I know, came out around February, March. So I guess what would you highlight from the, the, the big uh, Thanks. So going from Veeam 9.5 Update 4, which was our largest release in Veeam history at that time, to, v, to, to version 10. So he didn't say what update version they're on, but we're just going from update four to version 10. Version 10 became our largest and eclipsed our previous release by over uh, 25%. The what's new document for, for version 10 is, is 16 pages alone just for being backup and replication. So, you know, with that, um, the, the copy mode that I mentioned going versus just move into object storage, immutability, our ability to protect NAS. So if you're if you don't like NDMP uh, for for NAS protection or file shares, great. Our NAS is independent of NDMP. Uh, we don't worry about any of that stuff. All of that, along with so much more, uh, came with version 10, and we're about to do that again with version 11. So I, I encourage. Uh, and version 10, by the way, I, I want to point out had the fastest adoption with the least amount of bugs of any release in Veeam history. So, you know, we're very, very uh, big about our quality control. And when I say January to February, we try to time our release with usually with our kickoff in January. V10 did not come out until February because we found stuff in it that said, you know what, we'd rather GA a solid product, which is what Veeam is known for. And it, it proved to, to be exactly that by those numbers. So I would say if you're on 9.5, you're missing a lot. And version 10 was, was pretty exciting. And, and a quick follow-up on that. So um, with 11 coming out soon, does it make sense to wait for 11 and just do that big jump to 11 or? You know, I, I would say go ahead and, and install V10. Start getting used to the things that, that are there, our integrations, because because also V10 brought with it our integrations with uh, Veeam Backup with Azure, Veeam Backup with AWS. Uh, I, I mean, we're, we're really looking to keep that single platform there. and. You know, starting to get used to what's there, V10 or V11 is just going to capitalize on on all of that that we did in in, in uh, V10. So, 
you can certainly wait if you really want to to make the jump. We still support 9.5 update four. That's not a problem. You know, our support team takes care of it. Just from from a way of faster processing, even for your backups, we changed the way we do instant VM recovery to make them faster and more efficient. Um, there's a lot of things that we did under the hood in V10 that I think in the very least, especially if you're not someone who wants to adopt something like V11 right away as soon as we release it, you want to wait a month or two, you know, then now you're looking at almost potentially six months away. So yeah, upgrade to V10. It's an in-place upgrade. It takes maybe an hour. It's 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 next, next, next. And it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. All right, one last question, then I'm going to have to cut things off here as we're coming close on time. Um, does Veeam check for any major change in patterns during the backup process? So if, if anything pops up, like, like for example, um, an incremental is normally five gigabytes in size, and for some reason, this incremental is 100 gigabytes in size, that will throw out a warning, uh, especially in Veeam 1. Veeam 1 monitors not just VMware, Hyper-V and all that, but also obviously monitors the backup environment. That will also set off um, a, a warning alarm versus an informational one uh, and things of that nature to, to say to make sure that this is intended um, as part of the many alarms that are there just so that um, it could be that it, it grew because you threw a new new VM and, into that particular backup job, but it's want, wanting to get your attention to make sure that it's not potentially malware or something else writing data that shouldn't be done. So yeah, there are, there are things like that that are built in. Great. Thank you very much, Blake. Much appreciated. Uh, it sounds like there's definitely interest here um, to, to dive deeper um, in, in the next chance that we get. Um, back, back to kind of close things out here. I want to talk quickly about um, some things that Peters and Associates can help with from the standpoint of assessing your backup uh, and recovery strategy. So um, we do have an offering that we've developed, um, and uh, for folks that are that are joining us today, um, so we have a, a backup assessment offering, which will do an evaluation of backup and recovery strategy led by one of our project managers. So reviewing what you're backing up, what you aren't backing up, what your RTOs are, are you meeting those? Um, do you have special designations around critical applications? Um, are you using the various uh, tools that we've talked about in, in Blake's presentation, the things available to us in uh, Veeam to help automate things and, and to protect from ransomware? So we'll review those, your procedures, your general approach, um, things like uh, your configuration, offline backups, all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll also do a technical review that that um, assesses these types of things, looks at um, your storage and, and uh, all that stuff. So that's all together and, and finally results in a recommendation report um, to ultimately improve your, your backup and recovery strategy. So this is something that we're offering. Um, we've priced it at $1,000 for this engagement through the end of 2020. So um, that's obviously below our, our billable rates and um, just happy to help assess the state of our backup, our customers' backup environments and determine where things can, can get better. So if you have interest in that, please reach out to myself, reach out to your account manager or info at peters.com and we, we'd love to engage and, and uh, help determine uh, you know, what the right backup strategy is for you. One other piece that I'll, I want to touch on too, um, you may have heard us present on this before, I think most recently was uh, our, on our webinar series in August, but um, we do have a managed backup and recovery service in which we leverage Veeam and the tools that Blake talked about to manage our customers' um, uh, backup uh, environment. So uh, as part of that, that service, we include implementation of v a Veeam solution uh, with support for local cloud and like Blake talked about from a security perspective, offline storage that we encourage our customers to take advantage of. Um, we also include in that daily backup review by our team, error remediation. So we talk about you know data validation and zero errors. Our team is responsible for making sure that's happening and then ultimately making sure that we're testing recovery um, and that when a, a, an emergency does occur, our team is assisting in the recovery of that. So um, I'll provide pricing here with the general caveat that depends on your specific environment, your needs, your server uh, server count, workloads, that type of thing, but generally starts around $500 a month. So if this is something that you're, you're looking for assistance on, again, I'd be happy to put together some numbers that are specific to you. 
All right, with that being said, I've got two more slides and this is one of them. So uh, as I mentioned, we, we uh, do have a drawing to do for the Surface Go 2. Samantha has been dropping your names of our attendees into our random selection um, uh, generator. So uh, Samantha, I'm gonna turn it over to you to uh, turn on your mic and let us know who has won the uh, Surface. Thanks, Adam. I'm just gonna click the button real quick and let it load. Um, and it looks like Dan Martin was selected. Congratulations. Um, Dan, I will send an email um, from my Peter's email to reach out, get some info from you about where we can send it, address, and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for tuning in. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's awesome. Great. Congrats, Dan. Um, and, and thank you, everybody. Uh, to those who weren't uh, as fortunate as Dan to win the Surface Go 2, you do have a Grubhub uh, gift card coming your way. So um, those will be uh, sent out later this week. Um, so keep an eye on your email for that. But uh, you know, thank you, obviously, to everybody for joining us on this webinar. I think the questions were tremendous. Uh, really tells us there's a lot of interest here for us to do more of these types of events, and of course, bring in you know pros like Blake to be able to speak to this stuff really well. Um, you know, from a, a next step perspective, this is my final slide today before I open it up to you know any more questions that you might have for me, but we are at time here. So um, you have interest in our backup recovery assessment, reach out to us and uh, we'd be happy to schedule that. Um, we do have a ransomware uh, ransomware guide um, and actually it, it does uh, touch on the 3210 strategy from Veeam. We also believe in that. Um, touches on a few other things from a protect standpoint. Um, so Samantha can drop the link. She has dropped the link in our chat window. Please feel free to check that out. Um, and then lastly, uh, our, our next scheduled event here is on October 27th. Uh, we run our monthly cybersecurity webinar that Bruce Ward leads. So that will be our second to last one uh, of the year as we break in December. Um, so please take a look at that. Bruce will go through uh, some of the stories, cybersecurity stories from the past month or so, talk about what happened, how they could have been mitigated, and things that really have to do with our core customers, which is small and medium-sized businesses. And all that being said, I know we went a couple minutes over here, but I do want to thank Blake again for his participation today and his great presentation. And thank you to everybody for joining us. We hope to see you soon, um, either on one of these webinars or in uh, you know, a, a virtual Teams conversation. Thank you all.